Hello and welcome to Social Influence Lesson 1, where we're going to look at types and explanations for conformity. So first off, we have to answer the question on what is actually meant by conformity. And conformity refers to a change in a person's behaviour or opinions as a result of a real or an imagined pressure from a person or a group of people. Okay, that's according to Elliot Aronson in 2011. Now, importantly as well, we all do it in some way. Okay, so in our lives, everybody conforms to some degree or another. Whether that is saying that you like some music, even though you don't really like it, but you say that you do because all your all your friends like it. Whether that is changing your behaviour when you go and see a football game, let's say, where people behave in a completely different way than they would usually do um, on the streets. Um, whether it's following the crowd and running away from something that could be dangerous, that is also conformity. Um, behaving like everybody else behaves if you are part of uh, the services for example or part of a group that is expected to behave in a certain way that's also conformity or you know good old-fashioned smoking because your friends smoke and you want to fit in that's also conformity okay so we all do it um, for one reason or another and to varying degrees okay it doesn't have to necessarily be a bad thing um, but we have all done it at some point and there are three different types of conformity that you need to be aware of for a level psychology okay so you've got compliance identification and internalization and they're the ones that we're going to look at first i'll go through very quickly what they are and then i will put up a note-taking slide where you can jot down anything that you may have missed and just pause the video when i get to those okay so first off um, compliance is the shallowest level of conformity. Okay, um, when somebody complies, they change their public behaviour. So they change the way that they behave, um, but they don't change their private beliefs. And more often than not, it is a short-term change, and they do it because they want to be accepted or they want to fit in with the group. Okay, they don't want to be the odd one out. That's why people comply. The second type of conformity is the exact opposite to compliance, and it's internalization. Internalization is the deepest and most permanent level of conformity. When somebody internalizes, they change both their public behavior and their private beliefs. Okay, and they that change occurs uh, whether the group is present or not. Okay, so somebody who internalizes has adopted the beliefs and the behaviors of the group and believes that those behaviors and those beliefs are correct. And you continue to behave that way whether the group who convinced you are present or not okay so it's a lifestyle change and then the final one is identification now identification is a moderate level of conformity however I've left it to till the end because um, there are certain elements of it that come from compliance and certain elements of it that come from internalization so when people identify they conform to the behaviors and the opinions of a group because there's something about that group that they value okay so they want to identify with the group and they want to be recognized as being part of the group people who identify and conform due to identification they internalize the beliefs of that group um, but they do so in order to gain approval and to be recognized as part of that group Okay, so it has a little bit of internalization because the beliefs are internalized and seen as correct. However, the reason for doing it is very much along, along the compliance route because they're doing it not because they want to be right or not because they believe that it is necessarily the right thing to do, but they do it because they want to be seen as part of the group and they want to gain approval from that group. Okay. Um, so just very quickly then, there are three note-taking slides right here, so feel free to pause it on any of those if you need to jot something down. So there's compliance, and there's internalization, and then finally identification as well. 
And just at that stage, it might be useful as well just to see how that could come up in an exam. So you obviously could um, be given things like very short answer questions like outline what is meant by compliance or whatever. Um, but you could also get these little application questions where you get a story and then explain what type of conformity each girl was showing. So in this case, Jan was displaying internalization because she accepted the views as correct whereas Nora was more along the compliance route as opposed to internalization. Um, so anyway, let's move on to why we comply. And there are two main reasons for this. Okay, So you've got what's known as normative social influence, which is complying in order to fit in or to be accepted. And then you have informational social influence, which is conforming because you want to be correct and you want to do the right thing. Normative social influence is all about avoiding rejection and gaining acceptance. Okay, so it is a very emotional reason for conforming to a majority. Normative social influence will more often than not lead to compliance or identification because compliance and identification are all about wanting to fit in. And you're most likely to do it when you are around complete strangers because people don't like being the odd one out, particularly when you're around strangers or when you're around really, really close friends. Because, you, again, you don't want to be ostracized from your friendship group, so it's better to just go along with what the majority wants than to be kicked out of the group and be there by yourself. Okay, so very emotional things going on there, and it's all about keeping close with people and not being the odd one out. Informational social influence, on the other hand, is all about who has the better information. Okay, so if somebody conforms due to informational social influence, it's because they believe that somebody else has better information than they have. And so they conform because they want to be correct. They want to do the right thing. So it's more of a cognitive reason for changing. It's more of a thought-based reason for conforming. It leads to internalization, which kind of is understandable. Because if you are conforming in order to be right, then you're going to change your belief system, which means that you're going to internalize the new behaviors and believe that those new behaviors are correct. Now, people are most likely to conform due to informational social influence when there is an expert present. So somebody who you think has more information than you, or if whatever is happening is difficult so you might not be able to do it or you might not believe that you can do it and therefore you believe that other people can do it better than you or if the situation that you are in is ambivalent okay so ambivalent means confusing if you're in a confusing situation people will go along with the majority because they don't really know how to act and so if the majority are acting in a particular way then we assume that they have more information than we do in this confusing situation and so we go along with what they're doing a nice example would be if you're walking down the road and all of a sudden a crowd of people run towards you all looking scared that's a very confusing situation chances are you will turn around and you will run in the same direction that they're running in because you will assume that there's something going on down the road that you don't know about, but these guys do, and they have more information than you, and so you're going to turn and run with them because running away is better than potentially facing danger or a threat that is lurking down the road. So, quick note-taking slide for you again. There is normative social influence, and then there is informational social influence and again just like with the other ones um, in terms of an application question or in terms of seeing what this could look like in an exam um, something like this could come up so you get a little story and then you get asked whose behavior is being influenced by informational social influence and who's by normative social influence Okay, so Lola, for example, watches other students very carefully because she wants to complete her work just like they do. Lola is new at school, whereas the others might not be. She doesn't want to make mistakes. She wants to do it correctly, so she watches and then she conforms and does it like everybody else because she wants to be right. Whereas Oliver pretends to be interested because 
he wants to fit in. He doesn't want to be the odd one out. So he changes his behavior um, and pretends to be inf- interested, which means that he is conforming, he's complying due to normative social influence because he wants to fit in. Okay, so that's how you would go about answering those questions. Right, so let's have a look at some evaluation points. And our first one is research support for normative social influence. You should all already know Ash's study into conformity, um, and it's Ash's study where we're going to start off because he provides research support for normative social influence. Because after his experiment, when he conducted post-experimental interviews, and he asked his participants why they conformed to an obviously incorrect answer, participants said that they changed their answers to avoid disapproval from the rest of the group. Okay, so that clearly shows that compliance had occurred and the, com- and the participants had conformed in order to fit in. Okay, so that is normative social influence. Okay, you can go a step further as well if you want, and you can say that actually in a later variation to the study, Ash removed the pressure to publicly conform and asked his participants to write down their answers on a piece of paper. And at that point, conformity rates fell because people didn't fear rejection anymore. So that shows that at least some conformity is due to a desire to not be rejected by the group, okay, which is NSI. Right, you've got more research support here. So uh, this one is for informational social influence, and this is research conducted by Lucas et al. in 2006. And in this particular piece of research, students were asked to give answers to maths problems that were either easy or more difficult. And what they found was that there was greater conformity to incorrect answers when the questions were difficult rather than easy. And that was because when the problems were easy, the participants knew the answer. They were confident in their own ability. But when the problems were hard, the situation became a little bit ambiguous. The question became more difficult and the participants didn't want to be wrong. So so they relied on the answers that were given either by the other people in the group who were considered to be experts um, or wherever else the answer may have come from. Okay, so... That is research support for ISI, okay? Because this is exactly what informational social influence would predict. And then finally, just a third one for you, that we have a counterpoint for Lucas et al. Um, One issue that we always have with research into conformity is that it is very often unclear whether normative social influence or informational social influence is affecting people in studies, or even in real life for that matter. Okay, so for example, Ash found that conformity was reduced when there's another dissenting participant present. So dissenting participant means somebody who goes against the majority. But we don't know what effect the dissenter is actually having. So the dissenter may reduce the power of normative social influence by providing social support because the participant won't be the odd one out anymore. However, the dissenter could also reduce the power of informational social influence because they provide an alternative source of information. So all of a sudden, the participant in the study has more information to go off and so may want to conform in order to be correct. Okay, so both interpretations are possible. And so actually, we don't know 100% whether people are conforming because of informational social influence or whether it's normative social influence or whether actually it's too hard to separate them both because actually it could also be the case that both operate together a little bit in most real world situations and so actually separating them makes very little sense okay so that is one limitation for you there Now, just to be clear, I'm only giving you three evaluation points in this video. However, if you are pushing your essays to be a level four essay, then you should definitely get yourselves a fourth evaluation point from your book or from whatever materials you're using in lessons. Okay, I've given you three because you can write a good quality essay with three evaluation points. However, like I said, if you are pushing for those top band essays, then get yourself a fourth one please. Okay. 
So that is the end of the video. It's been a little bit longer than usual, so apologies for that. However, I hope it's been useful and I hope it's all made sense. As always, if you've got any questions, feel free to pop them in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you ASAP. Thank you very much for listening.